what are we going to talk about today? We will talk about ICAO regulations on solar AGL system. And I will explain why S4GA solar runway lighting can be used as permanent system by commercial airports. And just looking at the amount of participants we are hosting, and right now it's, it's 50 people, I think that the topic is of essence and it raises many um, questions. And because we've been hearing these questions for some time, we decided to run one centralized webinar to share our view or point of view on this topic because it's uh, of great importance. Now, agenda. What we will cover today. First of all, I will explain why airports choose solar AGL instead of wired one. I will tell you and present you with the cases when commercial airports use solar permanent runway lighting. Then we'll speak about key ICAO documents regulating runway lights. And from that, we will move on to the ICAO compliance of S4GA permanent runway lighting, where we will cover power source, so-called 4C, so configuration, color coverage, and candela of the lights, fungibility, jet bus resistance, and secondary power supply. And of course, we will finish with the conclusion. Now, why did we decide to pick up this topic, to cover this topic? The thing is that more and more airports are using S4GA solar runway lighting instead of traditional hardwire systems. Why? Because of numerous advantages that our solution has, including higher reliability, low investment cost, fast installation, and of course, cheap maintenance. There are two situations when airport use solar lighting. One as an alternative to wired. The second one, when wired cannot be used because, of, because it's just not feasible technically. If 10 years ago, um, solar runway lights were used as temporary, today's situation has changed dramatically. And we all can see that more and more airports select S4GA solar, light, uh, solar lighting as actually as a primary system instead of traditional and hardwired one. Unfortunately, at the same time, we face situation when regulations about solar powered lights are not straightforward. And the thing is that civil aviation authorities have no clear guideline on how to assess system compliance, which obviously slows down implementation of solar permanent AGL by airport companies. Part of the job that we do in S4GA, we support civil aviation authorities in interpretation of ICAO regulations in regards to solar AGL. You will understand why we help to interpret later, but the major problem is that ICAO documents and regulations are old and they have been created before solar even appeared. And that is why actually we have decided to share today part of our knowledge because we believe that many more airports could benefit from using solar. I want to cover and present to you typical cases when commercial airports, when do they use solar permanent runway lighting? What are those three cases? We have actually, actually we have three major cases. Case number one is Solar used as a temporary. When I say temporary, it means they install it permanently, but for a few months. 
large airports, of course, they cannot learn, run forever without maintenance. And you all know that in some cases, you need to actually close your runway to either resurface or to exchange obsolete runway lighting. When this happens, sometimes you cannot, you know, close the runway for one night or two nights or do job partially. You have to close the entire runway. And this means stop flight operations. At the same time, airports are under pressure to generate money. And to generate money, they have to continue flight operations. So how do they solve the problem? when they have, when their main runway is closed. What they do, they using their standby runway, if they have one, or they convert taxiway into the runway. But to be able to operate 24, 24 seven, they require actually runway lighting. And they install S4GA solar lights permanently for a few months until rehabilitation works are completed. So this is case number one. Case number two, backup runway lighting. In some countries, due to reliability of electrical grid or because infrastructure is old, airport cannot really fully rely on primary runway lighting. The main, the main fear, of course, in this, in this case is sudden loss of runway lights. In this case, those airports install S4GA solar runway lighting as a backup lighting. So in case if the main runway lights are off, for whatever reason, they can be off, you know, for one hour or for two weeks, then airport can switch over to the, to using solar and run on the solar lighting, continue flight operations until primary runway lighting is, is fixed. Case number three is probably more obvious well, domestic and regional airports that are located in countries with limited or unreliable power supply require AGL solution that will allow them to operate independently of electrical grid. They also require solution that is as safe and as reliable as conventional lighting, but at the same time, cost less you can install it faster and you can maintain it cheaper. And this is when they choose S4G solar runway lights and install it as a primary runway light. So again, those are three cases. When you install temporary, temporarily, but for a few months, when you install solar as a secondary runway lighting, and when you install solar as a permanent instead of traditional lighting system. So now I will explain why solar runway lighting can be used as primary runway lights in accordance with ICAO, because I think this is what raises most questions and most concerns. So again, I will now explain why solar runway lighting are used as a permanent in accordance with ICAO. What are the official documents that regulate runway lights? Well, we all know that uh, those are Annex 14 of ICAO, Volume 1, and we have Aerodrome Design Manual that consists of many parts, but what we mostly interested about are part four, visual aids, part six, frangibility. And in case of traditional lights, there is also part five, electrical systems. Of course, 
regardless of the way the runway lights is powered, it has to meet the same performance standards. What are the key standards applicable to any permanent runway lighting system? You need to have power supply that is safe and reliable. It can be either wired or solar. You need to take care of safety, which basically is a frangibility, jet blast resistance, and the secondary power supply. And the most important in all these documents is a performance. This so-called 4C, configuration, color, candelas, and coverage. Because by the end of the day, those lights are installed for pilots to be able to land the airplane. And pilots, they don't care about how light is powered, and they don't even know how light is powered very often. But what they care and what they see is light that is of specific color and installed in a specific way. And this tells them where they are in regards to the runway. And this tells them, uh, and this allows them to safely land, the, land and start airplane. And this is what matters. Now let's maybe walk you through the, through the standards what, when, what they mean. Configuration. Configuration is a location, uh, location and spacing between the lights. Color. Color helps pilot to identify correct type of light. You know, you have white for runway edge and you have blue for taxiway. And then you have candelas. Candelas, they, uh, it's a measure of a light output. And you have coverage. Coverage is um, identifies beam spread. In terms of safety, you have frangibility. So the units, lighting, light, lighting units shall be secured to their bases the way so if an aircraft collides with the unit, the unit shall be carried away. Jet blast resistance means that the unit should be designed to withstand jet blast. And you have secondary power supply, which means that if you lose your primary power supply, you have to you have to have secondary as a backup. And what ICAO really actually regulates is a performance and safety, because ICAO documents are performance based. They do not they do not regulate or they do not oblige states and do not, they do not even tell states countries how they shall power lights icao does not tell and does not define that what they regulate is a performance so because if you regulate performance it means that in every country wherever this pilot will go he or she will see the same type of lights that will provide him the same type of information. The next question will be, of course, so why ICAO does not mention solar? The answer to this question is actually very straightforward. If you would study the history of, of these documents, you would see that the first ICAO Annex 14 was issued in 1951. The first edition of Aerodrome Design Manual was issued is in 1983, and solar-powered runway lights are being used after 2000. And yes, you're right; those documents they have been updated. You now have um, edition eight of this document, but they still a little bit lagging behind technology. So this is the reason why solar is not uh, in any way defined or mentioned in, uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in those documents.
So the question is now, the main concern, of course, about solar AGL is, can solar energy be used as the only source of power for runway lighting in accordance with ICAO? Well, as I said before, ICAO requirements are purely performance-based. So ICAO expect lights to perform in a specific way, provide you with a specific color, and be safe to operate. This is what ICAO is about. ICAO does not regulate the way how airfield lighting is powered. Those of you who would say, but hold on, you know, you have aerodrome design manual part five, electrical systems. Yes, you're right. But this document was created to assist countries on correct way of powering wired lighting system. It is not a requirement of ICAO, so it is not obligatory to power light with cable, or it's not obligatory to power lights using constant current regulator. The reason why most of wired lighting systems are powered by CCR is because technically this is the most feasible way to deliver electricity for a at long distances and still keep uh, and be able to, you know, to maintain the same uh, light output. Regardless of if the light is close to the CCR or it's, you know, located four kilometers away from it. Each country has its own electrical standards and practices. Therefore, I can find it easier to leave this topic open for countries to decide actually. It is not mentioned or prescribed in Aerodrome Design Manual or Annex 14 that cables or power lines are needed to feed or supply power to the lighting fixtures. However, if cables or power lines are being used, there are some rules to be applied. And both documents automatically assume that all lights will be fed by cables. Both, both documents are old fashioned and are not up to date. And this is why there is no mentioning of solar. Okay. Now I would like to stop for a moment and allow you to answer some questions because I believe that we have covered very uh, sensitive topic. So I believe you, you will have many questions on it. If you do, please use your chat to ask them. The first question from Alexander Herring. Uh, what about ADM, electrical, uh, Aerodrome Design Manual, electrical systems? Uh, electrical system is a part five of Aerodrome Design Manual and it assist countries in correct design of wired electrical system in order to uh, maintain safety of uh, runway lighting. Because runway lighting is not as any other electrical system, it shall be created safely, which means you need different kind of backups. Next question is for SB Autista. How many times you can activate the lights during daytime while the operation is from dusk till dawn? I'm not very clear about what you mean. Sorry, you will have to uh, redesign your question. I, I do not understand. Next question Can light be powered by cable plus solar? Yes, it can. We also provide hybrid systems where light is powered by both cable and solar. How do you get around from Bill? How do you get around the height restrictions some CAA impose on hot at airports? Um, if you mean height restrict if by height restriction you mean the height of our elevated light, then the answer is we are compliant with this height restriction. Actually, in ICAO, you will not find any height restrictions, only in FAA. But at the same time, we are compliant with those height restrictions. 
Marlon Espina is asking, I'm interested to know the configuration of solar panel to store the power and deliver to the ago. To store the power and deliver to the ago. I'm not sure what you actually asking me about. If you can uh, re-ask your question, please. Uh, Rakan Hanania, um, does the unit has batteries to last for the night and the duration of the battery? Yes, every unit is has two batteries. I will show it on the next slide. And the autonomy that is stored in those two batteries is 180 hours. If you wish to uh, see why these lights can operate safely 365 days on solar with the batteries, I uh, recommend you to watch our previous webinar. Okay, uh, sorry. Marlon has been, I'm interested to know the configuration of the solar panel to store the power and deliver it to the AGL. Okay, now, so the question is, how do you configure solar panel? E, well, each light has its own individual solar panel. Solar panels are tilted and they are all facing one direction. And this is the optimal way to generate maximum power from solar. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but if you have more, you can ask again. Um, Hi, Selva from Defense Science and Technology Agency for Military Science. We are operating the solar AFL via wireless frequency. I would like to understand how EMC has been taken into consideration any testing done or certification obtained. Of course, uh, S4GA solar lights has been certified in accordance with EMC, which is electromagnetic compatibility. Well, it means basically that every light has been set up in a special chamber and we have tested and we have complete, uh, co confirmed that light does not emit frequency that could interfere with any now weight or any in equipment installed on the airport. Uh, Sajid Navas, in Middle East, where the weather can be rough, even sandstorms, if the panels are covered by such sand dirt, would, would it affect the efficiency of the light? Well, first of all, for the Middle East, for the desert applications, we use a special coating. It's called nano coating that we cover every solar panel. And it basically allows dirt to um, not to accumulate, but even if it accumulates, the efficiency of the panel does not drop by more than 10%. Of course, if you put a lot of set on the solar panel and cover it completely, well, well, yes, then you have to clean it. But as long as it's only dust, it does not influence uh, performance too much. Now, do you have permanent or temporary center line lines as well? If so, how it will be powered? Um, well, in, in these three cases that I have presented to you, all airports are operating non-precision, uh, in the non-precision uh, operations. This is what they run. And non-precision operations do not require center line. Can you even monitor from AGL monitoring system the battery percentage from each light? Yes, yes, you can. We provide airports with LCMS system that allows them to individually monitor each light. How do you get around glare issues uh, when the solar panels have to be positioned towards the ATC tower to maximize the solar rays the PV receives? The solar panels are so small and they actually do not reflect any light because they are black inside. So black color, it, uh, well, it, it, it do not reflect the sound. There is, there is no glare issues with our solar panels. You can see on the pictures later that the solar panel is black. Have you done photometric tests to the fixtures and how the results of the efficiency compared to the LED? Uh, this I will cover later. Of course, the photometric testing has been done. 
how we prepare design of BOQ for S4G solution. Uh, with this question, I really recommend to contact us directly because it will require some more explanation. How we perform any ICAO certification process? Uh, the same way as everybody else, we have to confirm using independent laboratory that lights are in compliance with performance criteria of ICAO. So photometry, colorimetry, and beam of the light. And of course, fungibility and gel blast. All this is tested and we have reports for every, uh, every, uh, well, every performance standard. Is it applicable to CAT2 and CAT3 runways? Solar lights can be installed on CAT2, CAT1 or CAT3 runway, but what happens is that uh, airport has to downgrade operations to non-precision. So it cannot operate on, as a CAT2, it still can operate, but as a non-precision runway with the solar lights. Could it be possible to produce different colors like pink and make it flash? We have a different case in Istanbul Airport. You may know we have so many taxiways and it is making some confusion for the follow me cars so that we are looking for individual solution to install elevated lights to flash on different color. I know there is no regulation related to our cases, but we would able to civil, we would apply to civil aviation authority whenever we figure out how the solution. Well, uh, as you said, there is there is no regulations um, because taxiway edge light is blue and taxiway center line is green dot. But if you are willing to install and test taxiway lights that are pink and flashing, we can deliver for us no problem. Okay. Are there any more questions? Okay. Now I will answer last question and I will continue uh, with my presentation. What is the lifespan of your batteries? Can you comment on times for different climates? Yes. The design lifespan is five years. In harsh conditions, meaning hot, uh, environments, the lifespan will decrease to two to three years. Okay. Now, I will continue with the presentation. Those who did not have the questions uh, answered, please, uh, uh, we will have another Q&A session at the end of this uh, presentation of this webinar. And of course, if you're still interested and you do not get your answer, uh, you can always contact us directly. As I said, ICAO regulates performance and safety standards and national authorities, so countries, country by country, they regulate power supply. A few words about 4C, configuration, color coverage, candela. So we are all on the same page, I'm sure most of you know that, but still we wanted to put some light on this on this issue because this is the most important issue that ICAO regulates. So configuration, if you look at Annex 14, it will tell you that, for example, runway edge lights you need to place along the full length of the runway and it shall be in two par parallel rows. This is actually configuration. So location and spacing between the lights. Also, ICAO tells us that intervals between the lights shall be not more than 60, so not less than 60 and not more than 100 meters for non-instrument runway, for example. Color. Color helps pilots to identify correct type of light. We want actually runway edge light to be white and not bluish or not yellowish. And this is very uh, important topic. Now, coverage. Coverage defines beam spread. For example, uh, Aikawa states that runway edge light shall show at angles up to 15 degrees above the horizontal and it shall be uh, in all angles of azimuth required, which means that 
basically this defines omnidirectional light. You know that for circle and guidance, you need to see runway from, from every direction. And this is why ICAO has this requirement. Okay. So how is S4GA compliant with this four requirements. As I said before, each uh, S4GA lighting fitting type, like runway edge, runway threshold, and taxiway obstruction, is tested in accordance with ICAO performance standards. We are testing lights using Intertech. It's one of the top laboratories, it's accredited to do ICAO compliance testing. Here are some um, parts of the report. As you can see here, the chromaticity that identifies that we, our light runway edge in this case is white, which is compliant with ICAO. Then here you see the coverage uh, compliance. Candela compliance. Number four C is you have coverage, color, candela, and you have configuration. And configuration does has nothing to do with the light itself. Configuration identifies how you shall install the light. So and it and this part is not is not covered with the certification. This part belongs to the installation company and designer, of course. So frangibility. Frangibility is defined by Aerodrome Design Manual Part 6. And it requires lighting fixture to yield in case of impact. It shall withstand 204 joules and it shall bend at 608, 678 joules. So in between, if your frangibility result shall be in between those two minimum and maximum parameters. And again, uh, S4G light has been tested by independent accredited laboratory, and it is found to be compliant with this requirement. The lighting fixture, the frangible mounting bends at 306 joules, which is in between those two. Uh, numbers, it means it is compliant. Jet blast resistance. Again, part six of Aerodrome Design Manual defines jet blast resistance. It says that um, light fixtures may be exposed to extreme wind loads or jet blast. And these lights are typically uh, operate at wind velocities of 480 kilometers for uh, high intensity lights and at 240 kilometers for all other elevated fixtures. S4GA has used Warsaw Institute of Aviation, the laboratory of aerodynamics to con confirm that light is compliant with this requirement of ICAO. So light has been placed into the wind tunnel and wind of 240 kilometers per hour, as you can see here, has been applied from all directions. And light, uh, the test confirmed that the device, so light is not damaged when airflow reaches this velocity. So light has not been disintegrated on or the solar panel has not flow, you know, fly away. Secondary power supply, very important topic. Of course, historically, as cable has been primary source of power, our electricity has been primary source of power, uh, mains electricity. 
Taekao wanted to address sudden loss of electricity, and this is why they require secondary power supply to be present. And ICAO, as a secondary power supply, they, they understand standby power generators, uh, batteries, S4GA solar light is designed the way that, sorry, I don't know if you, if you can see that, but basically in every light you have two batteries. Battery number one is a primary battery that light is using to operate. And battery number two is used when the main battery power source fails and switch over time is zero second, which means that uh, if one battery is down, then the light will switch over to the second battery. And this is how we address secondary power supply. And have in mind that unlike in conventional lighting, where you have one mains and one uh, secondary power supply, such as generator, in our case, each light has primary and secondary power supply. So the probability of sudden loss of lights is significantly lower in case of our system than in case of conventional. This is mostly it. And to sum up, S4G solar runway lighting is fully ICAO compliant permanent solution for commercial airports. And there are three reasons for that. It is compliant with all performance, reliability standards that are regulated by ICAO and that are requested by ICAO from any permanent runway lighting. Solar energy can be used as a primary source of power for runway lights. And you can use uh, S4G permanent runway lighting in for both large international and small domestic airports. That's it with my webinar, but of course, I'm happy and ready to run right now the Q&A session. Uh, first, Alexis Joel, uh, how often we need to maintain the solar panel if we install the light fixtures, how long will it work without any maintenance? When you say maintain solar panel, if you mean how often you have to clean it, uh, I would say depending on the location, from every second week to every two months. In case of, if we talk about maintenance, I really, I suggest you to contact us directly and I will answer this question because it, it requires certain details, but light is designed for 15 to 20 years of operations. You, what you have to exchange every two years, two, three years is the battery. Question from Alexander Herring, do you have high intensity runway lights in S4GA. Do we have inset lights? We do have high intensity runway lights in S4GA. We do not have inset lights, but we can solarize inset lights. So if inset light is a requirement of a design of a runway lighting system, we can make it solar powered. Is the light autonomy uh, is the light autonomy of 180 hours the same if operated at 1,200 candela? 180 hours is the autonomy of, of minimum intensity of 10%. At 1,200 candela autonomy will be around uh, 50 to 60 hours. Can we opt as for GA for precision airports? Yes, you can opt S4GA for precision for, for precision airports. But as I said before, 
you can install a sponge GA light on Precision Airport, but then Airport will have to downgrade its category from precision to non-precision. And this is what international airports do. They, if they need to rehabilitate runway, and they have to shut down their precision approach system, they install our lights and they downgrade their operations to non-precision for the time of rehabilitation. Do you have certified high intensity runway lights? Asking Alexander Herring. Yes, we do have them certified. Uh, yes, you are. Shakan is asking is if we can use our lights and precision as a backup setup. Yes, of course. Have you tested also the solar panel or just the light fixture in frangibility test? Yes, yes, we do. If there is an accident on the runway and hits the fixture, will it generate a spark? Hmm. Never heard this question before. Um, I believe that as any other light, uh, well, the, the runway lights designed by S4G are no different than other lights made of metal. Actually, I think, uh, well, if any other light can generate, then our light also can generate a spark. For maintenance, purposes. How do you address lens scratching from jet blast, a major issue for loss of photometric output? Well, I think the answer is very clear. If your lens is scratched and the photometric output is downgraded, you have to exchange lens. So basically, we can exchange just a dome, glass dome in every light. It's very easy operation, it takes around 10 minutes. Um, I am familiar with S4G Papi from the Australian market, research engineers. I would assume that the halogen lamps require quite a large battery. How do you approach this with regards to frangibility in the runway strip? Is the battery located in an electrical pit? Mm, no, we, we, did, we do it. There is no problem here because we install, you know, the Papi is installed on a side of the runway. So it's installed around 10 meters from the edge of the runway, or 15 meters. And the solar engine, uh, it's a combination of solar panels and the battery bank, is inside, inside, uh, sorry, installed even further away from the runway. And the height of this fixture is the same as the height of the puppy. And also solar engine is installed on the frangible legs, the same, so the same way as puppy is installed. Does the runway light comply jet blast test of 480 kilometers an hour? The presentation showed taxiway light comply requirement of 240. Does a solar panel act as an obstruction and requires separate frangibility requirement as per ADM part six? Okay, uh, 240 kilometers an hour jet blast is a requirement for, for the low intensity light. And this is the type of light that we are providing. It's not only for taxiway. And we do not have jet blast uh, certifications for, for 480 kilometers an hour. Uh, does solar panel as an obstruction and requires separate frangibility requirements as per ADM? No, it does not. As you know, solar panels or solar lights are not defined in aerodrome design manual. So we look at a solar lighting fixture as on the whole light. So we just test if it is frangible or not. Uh, do you have cost benefit analysis of solar AGL versus conventional wired AGL? Yes, we do have this cost benefit analysis. What I can tell you is that uh, on average, our solution costs at least 50% cheaper in terms of installation cost. And it also, the maintenance cost is a 10% of 
maintenance costs of conventional lights, so extremely cheap. And of course, zero operational cost because lights can consume no energy. Uh, Keith comments that frangibility is not just mechanical, there is an electrical frangibility requirements as a comment regarding a previous question. Okay, but how, how does electrical frangibility uh, well, uh, is applicable to light that has no electrical connection. Wired AGL has option to reduce intensity as per pilot request when visibility is good through CCR, but how solar lights intensity can be reduced if pilot asks for lower intensity. Okay, imagine every solar light has a micro CCR inside built in in every light. So when we send a signal to change intensity, this micro CCR changes current the way to reduce intensity to the requested level. To sum up, we can uh, change intensity in five steps or 10 steps, just a matter of programming the light. And we simply uh, command to the light to apply certain amount of power to the LED. And because this certain amount is defined the same way in every light, and the same way, uh, the same, the, the, every light produces the same amount of light. Please share this presentation on my email. For all of you who did not see, uh, who, uh, who want to see this presentation once again, or uh, wishes to share it with their customers, uh, we will uh, sh share this presentation, this webinar, as a video on our YouTube channel. And if you do not receive it or you do not find it, you can uh, simply contact us on our office email. Are the puppy lights LED? No, the puppy lights are halogen. Does the fitting have an external switch to extinguish the light for a display threshold? Extinguish the light. Uh, the fitting has external switch. Uh, it's called an emergency on off button. If you switch on the light with the help of this button, well, the lights, uh, light is activating. Um, how does your system interface to a follow the green requirement? It does not. Does it need to lay an infrastructure for the control cable for the brightness? No, no, no. There is solar system is completely above the ground. There are no cables required to control brightness. We control brightness in every individual light, but using radio signal. So we send a radio comment to the micro CCR built in in every light, and this micro CCR sets. Uh, uh, intensity. Does the solar engine of Puppy has a separate box for the battery? If yes, what is the height? Uh, the box, it has the box and the height is the same as the height of the Puppy. I would like to ask you how the communication work. Uh, Magdalena, I would really like to explain how the communication work, but Yes, uh, Olga, thank you very much uh, for the webinar, for the, for the channel. Uh, in regards to the communication, in few words, it's a wireless communication where we send a signal to the light. Each light is a repeater. So each light will, would retransmit the signal from the light to light. And we can control the lights wirelessly and we can also collect information from the lights and present this information uh, on our ALCMS control and monitoring system in a way that tower and technical people would know if the lights are on, which intensity they're on, and if they are operating correctly. Hi, if you consider developing inset solar lighting, will you suit the current shadow base? Yes, we will do that. Because if we, if we want to develop inset light, then we want them to be 
compliant with uh, overall practices. Is the S4GA AGL can be used for wired as well and backup the solar? For wired as well as. Um, Mr. Espina, can you please rephrase your question? I do not understand, unfortunately. Chris Blake, what is the response times for of sending of the comment to the AGL and confirmation of the signal being received? Less than two seconds. S4G product use wireless mesh network, whether the frequency can be encrypted or not. Definitely, it's a good question. Thank you. S4G product, we use wireless mesh network with encrypted frequency. How many airports are using solar AGL worldwide today? Uh, it's more than 200 airports in the world. Do you have runway threshold identification light fitting that meets FAA requirements? We do have this fitting that meets ICAO requirements. I'm not sure if FAA are the same, but our lights are compliant with ICAO, not with FAA. Have you tested your communication signals to be ensured that does not have impact on other radio signals? Yes, we do test them in a special radio chamber where lights, light emits the signal and then it is read by the equipment and we have confirmed that in the, uh, the, the radio output that is produced by the light is low and it is also below any, um, it is also within the norms for this kind of uh, equipment. Okay, thank you Keith for the, for the general comment. Okay, okay, Lorenzo, can you describe your experience in case of temporary solution? Yeah, we have plenty of experience with temporary solution. We supply temporary lights for military and for commercial airports. For military, we supply um, portable airfield lighting trailers um, that are used as a temporary if the military required to illuminate airstrip or runway in remote areas. For commercial airports, we supply two types of temporary solution. Number one is, a, is the one that I mentioned that, uh, for example, we have supplied uh, Fraport, Greece, uh, airport in Thessaloniki, when they make uh, rehabilitation works of their runway, they have to close their primary runway and they convert the taxiway to a runway and they use our lights to operate for six months time using solar lights. What is the product support in India for S4GA lights? In India, we do have uh, we do have a distributor uh, that is technically trained and is capable to support uh, installations and maintenance. Hold on. Uh, from how far we can send the radio signals to the light? When the Radio signal from the control tower to the first light. Here, the, the range is 1.5 kilometers. But then uh, each light is a repeater. So there is no range limitation because light will retransmit signal from light to light. Uh, regarding the height of the puppy battery, how you address the since this will be around puppy height and it is in the runway strips. No, no, the, the, the battery for the puppy is not located on the runway. It is located outside of the runway and it's actually pretty uh, far away from the runway edge. Do you have a video to show the current hardware is connected to S4GA light? Mm, no, but if you contact us, we can explain it. We have some infographics. Can we control single light using your LCMS like ILCMS? Can you control? Yes, yes, you can control single light. However, the question is why would you need to control single light? What we do have is a single light monitoring. So we can, we can monitor every individual light. 
are you working on puppies with LEDs? Yes, of course. We can take any uh, air field lighting equipment, including puppy, sign, runway guard lights, wind direction indicator, and we can make it solar powered and wirelessly activated. What is response time for any light operation from control tower? It is less than two seconds. Can you rehabilitate an existing halogen puppy to solar? Yes, we can. Okay. One more thing I wanted to show you, those who are looking for more information, uh, I would like to use this opportunity and to share with you how to find our web page and how to find some information that might be of um, value. Let me just switch over to my uh, to my screen. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to find more information about S4GA, you can just simply put S4GA runway lighting in Google. Here is the first page. That's the that's the address of the of the page. You click on it, and then depending on which solution you need, you can go either to. So this is not this is about complete. This is already the solution page. But if you go here, you have solutions. This is a, a complete permanent runway lighting solution. This is for temporary operations. So if you're interested in a solution for big international airports or domestic airports, that's where you find all the information about LCMS, equipment that we can solarize, about lights. You can download product catalog. You can download case studies. So you can basically see which airports today are using um, our lights and why, and what type of equipment is installed, including photos. Okay, uh, in case if you require um, certification information, then you can find them, hold on, here, certificates. All ICAO certificates are stored here. For example, if I want a low intensity runway light, runway edge light, I just press the button, open it, and here it is, test verification report from Intertech. In case if you require jet bus resistant frangibility reports or EMC, you shall contact us directly because they are not on the website and we will share them with you. Um, okay. Let me see if there are more questions. Okay. What types of bat battery for S4G AGL solar? Uh, we use typical uh, UPS battery. So it's a lead acid battery that is available worldwide. How about the frequency band of lights? Is that different or same for all? This is the same frequency. We use 868 megahertz. Uh, power output is below 1616 milliwatt. And we use the same frequency, but the way we communicate with lights, each light has its own ID. So when we send a signal to specific light, we just uh, send a specific signal to specific ID. Is there any failure percentage in operations? A one plus five T plus, uh, can you be more specific? What do you mean by failure in operations. Mark, I also thank you very much and uh, hopefully uh, you did not spend your hour uh, without you know, benefit for yourself. As I said, all this uh, Q&A session and webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and you are welcome to join it uh, and you are welcome to well, um, you know, find, uh, look at it again. There are also another webinars about why S4G lights can operate 365 days on solar, about reliability. 
One last thing. Next month, we are running a webinar about application of solar lights at big international airports. Well, we will cover in more details what I covered here a little bit today. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate you asking all these questions. Uh, Olga here is now sharing my email if you want to contact me directly. I wish you all all the best, lots of health, and hopefully this virus time will be over and we will see each other face to face soon. Thank you very much.